What a big surprise. The, the, the election uh, turned out the way a lot of people expected uh, on the Senate. But first, Nancy Pelosi is once again the Speaker of the House. Did anyone really expect anything any different? I, I certainly didn't. Um, I, I stood behind the force to vote, still do. Um, and it remains to be seen if the quote-unquote progressives did get any kind of concessions from Nancy Pelosi for her vote. But I'll be honest with you, it doesn't seem very likely. Doesn't seem very likely. And if they did get anything, I don't think it was that much. Um, at first, it looked like a few were not going to vote for her. They were going to, uh, I think the term was like abstained or something. Within minutes, though, they, they voted yes on like the second roll call or whatever. So n nonetheless, all the, the squad, or, or as uh, Jimmy has uh, I think appropriately labeled them as of late the fraud squad. Uh, they've made sure that we got Nancy Pelosi as Speaker of the House again for the next two years. Okay, uh, Didn't expect anything any different, but here we are. That being said, now that it's, it's pretty clear, um, unless the evidence comes out to show they did get some kind of massive concession from Nancy Pelosi, uh, those progressives sold everyone out threw their constituency under the bus. They're, they're in it for their own job. They're in it to try to play ball for the team. Okay. And, and by the way, the, the team is an absolutely corrupt team. Um, if there was some sort of hope left in that team, okay, maybe, but they've been showing us for the last four years, if not even longer, this team is corrupt to the core. And if you're playing for us, that means you're having to play into the corruption because you can't play ball for us and be honest at this point. I mean, they're, they're, seriously, they're making that more and more and more clear. If you're playing ball for the political team, and by the way, that goes for Democrats and Republicans, honestly. If you're playing ball for the team, then you're not playing ball for the American people. And that's clearly what they're doing because they want to hang on to that job because it beats going back to bartending, I suppose, right? Again, not that that would actually happen. If any of them did lose their office, they'd become the next CNN or MSNBC contributor, probably. Or maybe they would get lucky and get a job at TYT. Might even actually try to go out and start their own thing, but no. Nah, they're going to get the offers from the big money networks. They, they, they'll be the progressives advocating for progressives on, on the news outlets now, folks. Oh, isn't that such a good thing? That That's what would happen. So, you know, um, and <laughs> I, I'm sure time will tell. I'm sure at some point these people will be voted out of office and we'll see what they do. And the only reason they probably wouldn't go become a contributor of some sort would be if they've had a Nancy Pelosi style career and by the time they leave office they're so loaded they don't need to make money really because they've been bought they, they they've been bought out a hundred times over okay and they're they're set for the rest of their old raggedy life basically okay that that would be the only way that'd be the only way but the other big news is what's taking place in the United States Senate okay now that's uh, that's an interesting one. So with the United States Senate, um, we were hearing the whole thing about the elections with Trump, and I was tuning in, I was looking at the results, and, and of course you all know what my take on the whole Trump and election thing is. Do I think we have seen evidence that there's potential tampering going on? Uh, what we saw in Georgia, you know, in, in the mainstream media, the fact checkers, everyone else, oh, it's 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 perfectly able to be disputed. Uh, to, to me, to me, maybe it wasn't enough to overturn an election, but it definitely looked suspicious, and, and I'm of the opinion, walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it's a duck, or as we like to say in the South, where there's smoke, there's fire, okay? Um, that being said, who who's telling us there's nothing to it? Who, who, who is it telling us this? It's the people who would have done the rigging, and it's the mainstream media because they've never lied to us a day in our lives, right? But again, regardless, 
don't take that to think I'm sitting here saying we need to keep Donald Trump in office. I don't really care. We were screwed whether we had Trump in office or whether we got Biden in office. We were screwed either way. You know why? Because Trump sold out to the Republicans. Trump didn't do a lot of what he said he would do. And I'm not talking about things he had to try to fight Congress. Because, you know, that's the first defense is, oh, no, no. He, he had the Congress, the Congress. And even when the Republicans had the House, he had Paul Ryan and he didn't want to work with him and blah, blah, blah. Okay, cry me a river. We all knew that would probably be the case if you were really being honest with yourself. But there are certain things he didn't need Congress to do. Withdrawal, for example. Oh, well, he took troops out. Did he, did he withdraw? Or did he just cut back on how many were there? See, because that's a difference. If you cut back on how many are there, and we'll be generous and say he did bring some of those troops home. But, by the way, some of that drawback was just relocation, basically. You move from here to here but you're still deployed well that's not bringing troops home and that might be why he keeps needing a more uh, bloated military budget we all know half of that isn't being spent on troops anyway it's being spent on all the the dod pork where they're making crap for the military the military needs to be in a war to use the crap that they're being that, that's being bought for them by the government and if there's no war, that stuff can't be used. If that stuff can't be used. All these DOD contractors and corporations who make crap for the military, well, they're not making any profit. It's a racket. It's a racket. So Trump, Trump sold out. So I don't really care. And, and, and I've also pointed out multiple times, Trump did not do, in my opinion, anything to fight uh, for secure elections. He didn't support Tulsi's plan for a uh, paper ballot. Okay. He didn't push back and try to get anything done about what the DNC did to rig their own primaries in 2016. And speaking on that note, he hasn't done anything to free Assange, pardon Assange, pardon Snowden, pardon Manning, all the people who've been telling us the truth about this deep state, all the people who've been telling us the truth about the quote-unquote swamp he wanted to drain, and he did nothing for them. He's done nothing for them. He left them outside in the rain to, to shiver in the cold, and deal with the storm that is the deep state. Okay? That's what he left him to do. So he's done nothing to protect election integrity. So when I hear all these people coming out on YouTube are arguing for, oh, Trump and election integrity and blah, 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 blah. And I'm just going to be honest at this point. You know, for a long time, for a long time, I didn't want to get into... Uh, talking about other YouTubers who, who are using these kind of tactics. But I, I might be getting to the point that I'm about to break that rule because at this point, it, it, it's it's becoming too much, honestly. I don't know that I'm going to do it in this video, but maybe in another one, especially if this keeps up. And going back to that Senate race, uh, those Senate runoffs in Georgia, I got a feeling that rhetoric's about to pick up. Why? Why? Because it looks like John Ossoff... And Raphael Warnock have won their races in Georgia. So with, with, with that being said, um, that's going to give the control over to, to the Democrats uh, for control of the Senate now. Now, it's not going to give the Democrats 51 or more seats. This isn't what Obama had, which was a bulletproof Senate, uh, 60 plus Democrats in the Senate. No, 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 no. Um, what he's actually going to have... What he's actually going to have, or Joe, he being Joe Biden here and uh, Kamala Harris, is a 50-50. Okay? Uh, if, if Ossoff holds off, and it looks like he's going to right now, um, if he's able to hold on to his lead, Warnock has already won. Okay? It's going to be 50 Democrats, 50 Republicans. But because the the vice president is technically, I think, that the term is like president of the Senate, basically, uh, because of that, that would give the the leverage and the power to the Democrats. Because, obviously, the president of the Senate, the one who's there to do the tie-breaking votes, would be the, the Democrat. And with a 50-50, who? Um, <laughs> either these people are going to have to learn how to work together, or there's going to be a lot of tie-breaking votes on the floor, huh? <laughs> so, so that, that being said... Um, <sighs> 
uh, here, here's going to be another question. Are, are they going to be able to overturn the filibuster that they were talking about doing? You know, they, they were talking about getting rid of the filibuster in the Senate. I suppose they might have the numbers to do it, especially if Kamala Harris could be the deciding vote, but uh, we, we, we will see. So the first thing everyone's already going to is, oh, we're going to get the $2,000 checks now. Well, that's, that's a possibility. Uh, I'll say this again. If you get the $2,000 checks, I'm still pissed at all the extra pork spending that was in it. That that was highly unnecessary. But you, you know that all the people who were up in arms saying that the election was rigged, they're, they're without a doubt going to say, oh, it's rigged, it's rigged, it's rigged, it's rigged, it's rigged. And here's, here's what I find so ironic about all this, okay? They, they come out and they pretend that it is the Democrats who are just rigging the whole system against the Republicans. Mm-hmm. So, are we going to just sit on a bike? Even though, even though, folks, even though I'm in favor of keeping the Electoral College, not a popular opinion by some on the left, um, I've given my reasons why. If people want me to explain on that again, drop in the comments. I can make a video on it. But at the end of the day, the Republicans have used plenty of dirty tactics of their own. So for all these people, especially those who are <clears throat> independent at heart, okay, who, who have apparently found political refuge in the Republican Party all of a sudden, for them to say that this is just some rigging by the Democrats, do, do you know what gerrymandering is? Are, are you familiar with it? That's Republicans drawing their lines, and Democrats have done it in some cases too, but Republicans trying to draw their own voting districts so that they highlight a nice big fat chunk of people who live in certain communities and have certain lifestyles, therefore making them more likely to vote Republican so that it makes it harder and harder and harder for their Democrat counterparts to come in and win. What what the, what what is that? What is that? Yeah, they didn't tamper with a ballot. They 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 they, they didn't try to rig in a well I'm not going to say they didn't try to rig an election. To me, that's trying to rig an election. To me, that's trying to rig an election. If you look at how these lines are drawn, it looks like something that a three-year-old would have drawn on paper before he actually learned what the fuck a shape was in kindergarten. Before, you know, his teacher told him, you draw squares and rectangles, circles and triangles. Before he knew what that was, he just eh, all over the fucking paper. That's what some of these damn districts look like. What the what the fuck is that if it's not election rigging? Genius. Really? That's election rigging. That's election rigging. You think the Republican Party, the 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 people in charge of the Republican Party give a fat rat's ass about election integrity? They couldn't give a shit. Okay? They couldn't give a shit. I will say this again, Mitch McConnell is glad, glad that Joe Biden got elected. Who the fuck did they leak out, I think it was in the New York Times, Was ne had his team at least negotiating with the Democrats to talk their asses down to initially supporting those $600 checks. Who the fuck was behind that? When Trump, regardless of his reasons, said 2000 who had their team behind the scenes negotiating for $600? Joe motherfucking Biden. Period. Joe Biden was behind it. And, and you think that the Republicans don't like this guy? <laughs> when he didn't negotiate cutting out all that damn bullshit that was supposed to go to other countries and the military and the special interest groups. No, fuck that. Leave all that alone. We need to talk about how much we're, we're able to give the American people in this fucking thing. $2,000, oh, it's a lot of money. Well, of course, now that the public pressure campaign is out, Joe Biden is supporting it. Oh, and he claims, by the way, that if both of these people won, we would get our $2,000 checks. But uh, again, I, I digress. You think the Republican Party are a bunch of saints? You know they want to lock up Assange about as much as the Democrats, right? You know they wanted uh, to put Snowden in jail probably about as bad as the Democrats, right? They're, they're war hawks. They're bought by the fucking rich. 
you might be able to point to a couple who have some actual moral fiber and believe in civil liberties and this and that. But by a, by a large margin, they're just as corrupt as their Democrat counterparts. So, uh, again, if there was any sort of rigging, in my opinion, for Trump, the Republicans had to be in on it. They had to be. I don't think the Democrats, see, controlling your primary when the other side's not involved, well, how hard is that? The other side has no hand in it. But when the other side comes into the equation for a general election, how can one party just rig the whole thing without, and I know people are going to point toward, oh, well, poll watchers this and poll watchers that and blah, 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 blah. And again, yeah, we, 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 we've seen some stuff there. We've seen some stuff there. But at the same time, why are none of these Supreme Court justices acting on it if, if it's true? Why none of these other courts do anything? You know, Trump's been court packing for quite some time. How come none of this stuff paid off him? These are right-wing judges, right? It's either got to be, number one, it's truly bullshit, or number two, the deep state Republican Party had a hand in it too because they want him out of there because he's dangerous with his rhetoric. They realize his rhetoric has started a, an outsider movement within both parties, and that's dangerous for the people in charge, and they don't like it, and they want it gone. So get him the fuck out of here and put Joe Biden in. And if we got a rigging election to do it, hey, let it go. But again, if that happened, I'm going to say Trump has some blame here because he's done nothing to protect truth tellers. He's tried to rub elbows with these shady motherfuckers. Now, shifting back to the Senate race, do I think this was a rigging? No, I, I don't. Now, maybe some evidence could come out and show me otherwise, but let's be honest here. Why? Why would it be? You think that fucking Purdue and Loeffler are some kind of outsiders? They're fucking Republican hacks. They are Republican hacks. Meaning that the special interests and the donors are taken care of by them. And, and it's not like Warnock and fucking Ossoff are, are, are the next damn Tulsi Gabbards of the Democrat Party. No. No. I mean, some are going to argue if they're left wing, they're better than the alternative. But either damn way, it's not like if they're trying to get some dangerous figurehead out of office whose rhetoric is dangerous. I, 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 you're not going to convince me that unless there's overwhelming evidence that just comes out and floors my ass that the Democrat Party, if there is any rigging or doing it by themselves, they, they, they've got to have some help. They're, they've got to have help from the opposite side of the aisle to throw the people that they want out under the bus. And I just don't think the Republicans want to do that to Loeffler and Purdue because they play ball for the team to the, to the, to the T to the T. Okay. They, they, they are not the Trump kind of Republican. They're the Mitch McConnell kind of Republican. So why in the hell would the, would the Republicans want to help rig them too? No, it, that, that, that doesn't make no sense. That doesn't make no sense. So, but I know, uh, I know what's going to be coming. I know there's going to be pl plenty of people out there who are going to be adamant that we, 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 we need to defend our election. And, and by the way, it, it looks to me like um, there, there's some uh, protests uh, today in Washington. And it looks like a group of, or of thousands of Trump supporters have stormed the Capitol building. Now, I'm reading on Twitter, some people are pushing back, saying it's... it's Probably not Trump supporters, like Antifa dressed as Trump supporters. I, I don't know. It wouldn't surprise me if it's Trump supporters. It wouldn't. Have, have you listened to uh, what these people truly believe took place? They're, they're reaching a point where they believe that they literally are going to have to, in some cases, probably fight to save their country. They're, they're, they're bought and sold at rhetoric. And why? Because they genuinely believe that the Republican Party is the saving grace of this country. The Republican Party's been selling us out for years, too. They just don't apparently realize it, or they bump their head and, 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 and forgot it. And now they just sit around on their YouTube channel going on these rants just like Castaway talking to Wilson the Ball.
little bit of a subliminal message there if anyone wants to figure that one out. Not, not, nonetheless, and, and for the record, I'll be making another video on this too. Now that Tulsi's become a popular topic of conversation again, Tulsi Gabbard, I've heard two, two big pushes for Tulsi Gabbard. The first one, join up with Justin Amash, run on the Libertarian ticket 2024. Like it. Like it a lot. The only thing I would suggest, and this is something that I've told a lot of people as well, is we need to take away the Senate and the Congress from the Democrats and the Republicans. Um, and I think before we install a good third-party president, we need to have made a good dent in their power structure there. Because if we get Amash Gabbard as a president and we do nothing to the House and the Senate, we're screwed. We're screwed. And so I'm perfectly fine with him running for president, but I would like to see if we're going to do that, the third parties, especially at least the libertarians, if that's who we're going to put all the weight behind here, they're going to have to get some people out there who can start picking off Senate and, and congressional seats. And I don't even know for sure which states have Senate seats up uh, in 2022 or 2024. But whatever it is, they need to get the ball moving and they need to get the ball moving yesterday. Like now, that needs to be just as big of a topic of conversation, in my opinion. Um, but if Gabbard and Amash do not run, then I would encourage them to, you know, Tulsi just left um, Congress and the House. Maybe she goes for a Senate seat. I mean, either way, we need to chip away at their power structure. Now, that being said, the alternative option and this seems to be getting a growing number of support, is for Tulsi Gabbard to become a Republican. <laughs> Some people either never learn, or they're truly just that full of crap, honestly. <laughs> the, the Republicans. The people who passed, or, or pushed, pushed, under the Bush administration to give us the Patriot Act. <laughs> the pro-war group. We can never leave the Middle East. What? <laughs> Tulsi needs to join that party? What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Seriously? Well, Tucker Carlson wants to withdraw. Yeah, and Tucker Carlson. <laughs> um, I don't know that he fits the bill as a Republican. Tucker Carlson strikes me as a little bit of a libertarian in a lot of ways. Hmm. Imagine that. Tucker Carlson. Tucker Carlson strikes me as a libertarian. Gets along great with Tulsi. Justin Amash joined the Libertarian Party after leaving the Republican Party. Seems to get along pretty well with Tulsi. Tulsi's on her way out of Congress. Where does she fit in? The Republican Party or the Libertarian Party? How the hell can you call yourself an independent at heart and cheerlead her to join the party of war hawks and Wall Street? <laughs> that's that's insulting, honestly. That, that That's simply insulting to cheerlead her to join the frickin' Republicans. Now we can argue, oh, you might be able to point towards how you like certain people within the Republican Party better than a Democrat. But I'm going to be honest with you. I'm the analogy man. A lot of people love my analogies, right? To me, cheerleading anyone to jump from one of those parties to the other, Democrat to Republican or Republican to Democrat, I don't care which way, you take your pick. But to cheerlead one to jump from one to the other would be like being happy that someone left ISIS to join Al-Qaeda, in my opinion. Both of them are fucking terrible. Get the fuck out of both of them. Honestly. N neither one of these parties are worth a damn anymore. So leave. You know what we really need? We need a fucking alternative to the duopoly. We need a good strong third party. Some people are pushing the people's party. Other people believe go with what's already established. Have an exchange of ideas. The libertarians already got the foothold. 
Let's work with the libertarians. Just uh, If it's just long enough to take the power game away from Democrats and Republicans, and then if you want to branch out and fracture out later, have at it, and we can debate other third parties could come along. H however we want to go about it. I have my doubts that the People's Party is going to be able to gain enough momentum to make serious dents between now and 2022 and 2024. If they can and they can prove me wrong, whatever, I'm all for it. The problem that you need to remember with all these different third parties is the more third parties you have, and they're already known for bringing in a low percentage of the vote, you would have to have one strong third party. That's going to be able to pull together a coalition. Well, the more third parties you have that have candidates people might like. For example, what if you have Tulsi Gabbard and Amash on the Libertarian ticket in 2024, and then you get Ventura on a People's Party ticket in 2024? Ventura is pretty fucking popular. And he's probably going to go over a lot better with people on the left than Amash would. Now, Gabbard, but hey, there's even people on the left who've sold out Tulsi Gabbard now and don't want nothing to do with her either. So, again, if you're going to do and again, save some of this for another video, but that that's some things to consider there. We need an alternative. Democrats and the Republicans suck. To the core. They're terrible. They're bought off. They sold out. They're, 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 they're abysmal for our country. And we need to get rid of them, period. We need to get rid of them. So the, all, the, 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 the true game plan here should not be to encourage you to jump from one bad team to the other. It should be, no, let's get out there and start an actual alternative to those two bad teams. But, of course, some people, some people just want to name drop uh, favorable politicians popular politicians so they could try to start raking in views to their channel that's lost tons of subscribers because they became the political flip-flop but whatever <laughs> uh, again if anyone thinks that these election changes with pelosi or the democrats in georgia have taken your country away from you have stolen your election integrity you need to be exploring history and you need to take a real red pill and, and, and not the Republican pill. They're two different things. The red pill is actually the one from the Matrix that wakes your ass up. The Republican pill is what the Matrix referred to as a blue pill, basically. Keeps your ass asleep and you just buy Republican propaganda. You lost election integrity a while ago. You lost a lot of the key elements to freedoms in your country a long time ago. You didn't do much about it. Which means you let them get away with it. And it's one of those things now where when you allowed it to happen at the time, well, some things ain't so easily repaired. And you're seeing prime example of that now. It's just the truth that at the end of the day, sometimes you can't always put the toothpaste back in the tube. And you allowed those freedoms to be ripped away from you years ago and no one stood up and hit the streets, but you're doing it now because Trump got potentially screwed over. Well, uh, again, if, if, you, if you've lost your country, it didn't just happen. You've been losing it for a while now. You've been losing it for a while now. And I got news for you. If you're going to hit the street, got, at least, at least wisen up and do it for the right reasons. Not because of Trump. Not because of Trump. That, that, that phony motherfucker did nothing to protect your election integrity. He tried to rub elbows with those pieces of shit and it bit him in the ass. And now he's pissed. And he's throwing a tantrum like the big old fucking baby he turned out to really be. And if you're going to try and defend that, then really, you're part of the problem here too. Period. Period. You should be defending the election integrity just simply before election integrity. Not because your favorite man at the bully pulpit has a damn hissy fit. And you want to get four more years of entertainment out of the fucker. That, 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 that's the shittiest damn reason I, I've heard yet to, for, for why someone should be concerned with this, period. So yeah. A lot, lot of things there. A lot of things there. I'll be making some more videos. Um, we, we got a story out right now about... Uh, some stuff with uh, Pelosi and Mitch McConnell's house. I'll be talking about that in the, in the next few days. 
Uh, I will be, at least unless something changes, going on Friday night. Big talk, little talk. Uh, we're going to be talking about good friend of the channel here. Uh, Franco, Frank Analysis. Channel's taking off, man. He's going off to the races now. He's, he's, he's hitting it big time. He's been at the D, uh, up at D.C., um, uh, Free Assange protests. He's been at the uh, Force the Vote. Uh, he and uh, uh, DJ Elf, uh, DJ Elf Seven. He, you know, Ed Lee. They were all at the at the protests. Uh, I noticed. Um, it looked like at the Assange when he was uh, talking a little bit with a uh, guy from Slow News Day. Uh, it also looks like uh, I think he got in, uh, interviewed by the Convo Couch. So. Shout out to Franco, man. He's, he's he's doing good things. Uh, you know, if if I could, I would have liked to have been there for those. Um, unfortunately, DC is quite a bit of drive from South Carolina. Combining that with good old work over forty hours a week, and and then I got a curveball thrown at me this week. Uh, last minute, I got called on Monday and was told, uh, "Oh, by the way, uh, we we got some problems. We lost a, a good bit of staff with a with a COVID breakout. So you're going to be on third shift all week long." Whoa! <laughs> and for those of you who don't know, um, I'm, I'm not a third shift guy by any stretch of the imagination. I, I get off and feel like a zombie in the morning. Third, get stay staying awake. To way over in the morning like that, that is not my cup of tea. I, I'm, I'm a very old man when it comes to my sleeping habits. I like to turn in by maybe midnight. If I want to live dangerously, I can probably push it till two or three. But, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I, I like my sleep a lot. So that being said, uh, more content will be coming. Uh, if you like the video, hit that like button, comment, just, uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Tune in next time. We'll be talking more independent politics.